Tell us, uh, what is a food policy council? Well, it's a simple uh, set of words, but the first thing about it is it says food. And uh, most things that you see in government don't ever mention the word food. And you could go up and down any government office, you'll see there's uh, nutrition and uh, safety. Uh, and then there's all sorts of departments in government that deal with things like garbage, which is but one third uh, related to food, but they don't ever say they have a food thing. And then transportation, even though 20% of car trips are uh, usually to buy food in a city, they're not called the food access department or anything like that. So food is the first word of a food policy council. We try to deal with food like the whole enchilada, as it were, all the things put together. And our belief is that so this is the first concept of a food policy council is when you put it all together, the transportation and the access and the farming and the garbage, you get way better solutions than when you think about it in terms of parts. Could you describe how the Toronto Food Council works, Food Policy Council works, how many members, who's on there, and how they reach decisions or identify priorities? Sure, I think the Toronto Food Policy Council is one of the oldest of the councils. It was started in 1990, and uh, we have 30 members uh, who are all citizens, uh, and all volunteer to be on it. And they are usually expert in one way or another, usually as a result of experience, in almost every food problem that we have in the city and in almost every solution. So you can't get on if you're only about a problem. You also got to be about a solution. So maybe somebody who works in a food bank, somebody who works in an alternative agriculture, somebody who's into community gardening, so that the city has access to the best intelligence there is in the city on any problem related to food. And my job is to manage them. <laughs> what are some of the big projects that you guys are working on right now? Um, well, the city of Toronto, along with about 140 cities uh, around the world, have made commitments to do something dramatic around global warming and reducing the uh, global warming emissions. And so uh, there's the better part of uh, $10 million over the next five years has been dedicated to things that are somewhat food related that do that. So we're on that file, you might say. Um, and community gardening and support for all sorts of backyard gardening and a variety of things like that are, are right up there because they all dramatically reduce the distance that food travels. Um, so that's probably a, a huge chunk of what we're doing. We're very involved in a big project in the city right now to expand the kinds of foods that you can get on the street. And part of what we're about is to say food should be celebrated, it should be public, it should not just be a private thing, you, you in the supermarket and a whole bunch of shelves, that it's a place where you should know the farmer and know your neighbors as you're doing it. So, um, you know, we're, we're big into anything that, uh, that promotes that. We're big, very big into promoting farmers markets, community fresh food markets for people who are on lower income, they still get fresh food in a sort of market atmosphere. Um, and uh, rooftop gardens, we're big promoters of that. One sixth of the space of almost every city in North America is flat roofs, so they're just waiting uh, to, to have that adaptation made to them. I think a lot of urban areas in North America and the United States certainly are looking at local food systems and how do we build it and become part of this. So what would be your uh, advice to a, a, a city as to why they should develop a food policy council. Yeah, well, um, the interesting thing about a food policy council is I try to do as little as possible. That is, we try to initiate partnerships and get other people to think in ways of opportunities that they never had before. So we mentioned local food, which is the really exciting uh, trend of today. We actually try to couple local and sustainable in the same way that we say peanut butter and jam, macaroni and cheese, research and development, you should say local and sustainable. Um, so we're concerned with the uh, animal treatment, we're concerned with the treatment of workers on farms, we're not just the distance that the food travels. And uh, we helped uh, establish a nonprofit called Local Food Plus, which has now become the continent's leading uh, certifier of local and sustainable food. And they both certify the farmers and help them find markets. So 
We now have the biggest local and sustainable food purchasing project in the world at University of Toronto, 80,000 students. And they start off 10% the first year, 15 the next, 20 the next, and they're just into the third year now at 20% of the food that's served all across the campus there is local and sustainable. So we're putting millions into the local economy and supporting the green belt around Toronto, which is the largest green belt in the world. And farmers can't sustain it unless they're making a, a living. So you can't have local food unless you've got local farmers. You can't have local farmers if they're all broke. So <laughs> that's sort of how our logic model goes. And uh, so, but we're not doing it. We're just providing an atmosphere that's enabling others to make th this very obvious thing happen. Mm -hmm. Is there an economic, purely economic case for food policy councils? Well, I like to argue, uh, whenever I hear a, a city councillor saying, well, it's a great idea to have a food policy council, but we can't afford it, that food policy councils make money or save money for cities. They more than pay their salary. I like to believe that every uh, day I, uh, try, I make uh, my year's salary. <laughs> Either we're bringing new foundation money into the city or we're identifying savings, like uh, garb, what we now call garbage that could be composted and actually sold as a resource or, or its cost recovered. Um, we're uh, reducing unnecessary uh, suffering that's associated with being on low uh, income and giving uh, kids uh, an opportunity that they otherwise would never have had and might have end up costing the people two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year for reform school. So we're saving money every day. So in my opinion, there's not a city that can't afford not to have a food policy council. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you.